Today on Voiding Warranties, I'm going to show you a new form of abnormal combustion that can only happen in a rotary engine. Voiding Warranties, where we find new and interesting ways to break things, including our engines. Are you ready to have your mind absolutely blown away? I have the same setup I was using for my lean burn experiments, except we're going to do something different. We're going to create abnormal combustion inside a rotary engine, and we're going to do it by retarding timing. Watch this. I'm retarding timing, and you'd think it would start running worse. I mean, right? It's running a super lean mixture, it burns really slowly, it should run bad with retarded timing. In fact, it should just get worse and worse and worse. Front uh, peak pressure point is really far back. It should just start running horribly now, right? Any second it should start getting worse. Whoa, what is that? That's detonation. And it's running better. I mean, look at this. This is firing both coils after top dead center. It should be running horribly right now, but the peak pressure point is almost normal, except it has had a little bit of detonation. It still has some minor precursors there. Let's see what happens if we remove some more timing. Whoa! What is going on here? This is so strange. This shouldn't even be running here. How is this happening? All right, we managed to create some abnormal combustion in a rotary engine. Let me show you why it can only happen this way with a rotary engine. Now here we have a rotor housing and a rotor. Here's the basic idea. Let me show you all four cycles so it makes sense. The intake port is up here. As this volume expands, it intakes air. The intake port closes and it begins compressing the air. It finishes the compression, hits top dead center, and before it hits top dead center the fuel is ignited. So it's really high pressure and it hits its peak pressure at about 45 degrees after top dead center right there and it has great mechanical advantage against the eccentric shaft. So it can push it all the way around to here and then the exhaust port opens and it goes out the exhaust and it's ready for another intake. Now there are a couple neat things about this. Number one, if you look down here, you have the leading spark plug hole and the trailing spark plug hole. Now the leading is big and the trailing is small. There's a reason for this. So, you're the rotary and you have just, you are just passing over the trailing spark plug hole, okay? The problem is, you're still on the compression stroke over here and you haven't compressed very much. But you're in the middle of the power stroke over here so you have a lot more pressure. If the hole was any bigger, you'd get blow by right here and you'd ignite the incoming charge. So to prevent that, they make the hole pretty small, just slightly bigger than the size of an apex seal. So the apex seal crosses over there, very little leakage between the two faces, no big deal. But what about the leading spark plug hole? Well, now the leading spark plug hole is much larger and there are a couple reasons for this. Uh, it prevents fouling, it also gives it better access for better ignition. But the biggest is because it can be. Right here in the cycle, you're about to open the exhaust valve, you've expanded the charge quite a bit, and over here, you're at towards the end of compression, so you have a lot more pressure in there. So the pressures are about equal, not a whole lot happens, and it just breezes over, there's no problem, everything works out. What if you're a jerk, and you decide you're going to retard timing? And instead of the peak pressure point happening at 45 degrees, right about here, what if 
the peak pressure point happens, I don't know, closer to here, well, you have all that extra pressure from combustion right here. It hasn't done a whole lot of work in turning the shaft around, so it's still at a high pressure and it just blows right past the leading spark plug hole into, oh my goodness, what's in here? Oh, an air fuel mixture. So you have this pocket of burnt air and fuel at high temperature that goes straight into the pocket of unburnt fuel and air. Oh wait, what happens? It ignites. So we have pre-ignition and it keeps burning as it goes towards top dead center and then the added pressure causes it to detonate. So it detonates and the knock sensor can detect it, but this one it ignited way too soon. So as it gets here, the peak pressure point was earlier than 45 degrees. So as it gets here, it's low pressure. So this charge is untouched again. Oh, let's go around, let's go around, oh! Untouched charge, gets ignited too late, gets peak pressure too late, blows into the next chamber. Oh, pre-ignition again. And the cycle continues. It's abnormal combustion, but abnormal combustion that can only happen on a rotary, because only on a rotary do you have two pistons connected to one another. So yeah, I found something new. Awesome, right? But it's not very useful. And in fact, all I know now is don't do that. You can destroy your engine. But hey, learn something every day. So if you liked what you've learned today, if you want to learn more and you want to see more videos with me doing stupid things that are probably detrimental to my engine, please click like. And if you want to see more of this stuff, click subscribe. And until next time, keep on voiding warranties.